Hey guys, welcome back. It's Monday Morning Mojo and it's me, your friend Anna Gibbs, excited for another week, another opportunity for us to really just set our mind on things that matter, that help us move forward and have the life that we say we want. So I wanted to do something a little different today and I think this will be fun. So here on my desk in my home office, I have this box nice little wooden box with all of these cards inside of it. The cards all have a statement or a phrase. And this was a gift given to me by a friend of mine, Lori Burns. So shout out to Lori if she's listening. And I'm just going to pull a card sort of at random. And that will be the message for the week. And we'll talk about it. Let's see what we've got. Okay. I like this one. Now, I know that a lot of you probably can't see me, but I'll just hold up the card so you know, because if you're watching on YouTube, of course you can, but I know if you're like me, you're probably in the car. That's where I listen to a lot of podcasts. Here's the message, more importantly, on the card. Never put the keys to your happiness in someone else's pocket. Love that. Never put the keys to your happiness in someone else's pocket. I'm going to put this card right up here in the front so I can stare at it. And we're going to talk about how this is so important because I think that this can happen often in our lives. And sometimes we're not, we, <laughs> sorry guys, sometimes we might not even be aware of it. And that is that we rely on or expect something or someone else to bring us happiness. And that couldn't be further from the truth because the truth is you and only you hold the key to your happiness and only you should hold the key to your happiness because it is about you having the ability to define your life and define exactly what it is that makes you happy. Because what makes you happy or fulfilled is going to look different and feel different than what might make me happy or fulfilled or what your brother or sister or friend or spouse or partner might feel is the definition of happiness. And only you get to decide that for yourself. And so I love this message because when we give the keys to our happiness to someone else, we're giving away our power and we're giving away some of our control. And in the process, we're weakening our own ability to really be in control and have agency of our own lives. And so I think this is a great message because we should never put the keys to our happiness in someone else's pocket. It's just not healthy because then we become overly dependent on other people for our happiness. And when someone else holds the key to your happiness, one of the things that can result from that is that you might start taking a back seat to your own life. What do I mean by that? I mean, you might avoid taking action towards your own goals and dreams and instead wait for someone else to open the door for you or wait for some magical sign to drop from above. And I, listen, I believe, as you know, that we're all divinely created. And I know that, you know, for me, God is working in my life always. I also know that he gave us all free will. And so he is looking for us to take the opportunity to make decisions and to take action and move in the direction of our dreams. And when you move in the direction of your goals and your dreams and your vision for your life, that is where you start to really expand on your happiness and your joy. And so it is up to you to drive that. And so if you expect something or someone else to make you happy, and we've all been there at some point in our lives, sometimes even unconsciously, we're all talking about the one day, someday goal and how much happier we're going to be, right? When I get that job or promotion, when I move to that house in that zip code, when we go on that vacation... And what starts to happen is we wish our lives away and we're waiting and waiting instead of making a decision about what we want and start bringing it in little pieces every day. Don't allow anyone else to determine what will make you happy. 
Because when you allow someone else to determine what will make you happy, you will allow them to make you feel a lot of things. And it is not about anyone else determining your self-worth. That's why it's called self-worth, because you determine that. You shouldn't allow anyone to make you feel less than. And so if you give out the keys to your happiness to some, uh, someone else, they're in the position to determine all of it, what makes you feel good, what makes you feel happy, and what may not make you feel so, so good or so happy. So I love that this card is bringing this back into focus for all of us today because happiness is an inside job. And it is really about understanding that as we stand firm in our vision for ourselves, as we get to know more about ourselves and master ourselves, and we get to understand the things that make us tick, the things that make us happy, the things that bring us joy, then we get to determine how we define our life. We get to determine what are the next steps. And all of that is what's bringing our happiness. Now, I think it's important for us to also talk about the fact that we're social creatures. Human beings are social creatures. And while we all have different social needs, at the core of our existence, we do have an emotional need to, to be connected to other people. And I think that it's just understanding it and managing it. And for us to know that it's not about seeking validation. So in other words, it's normal for us to want certain things from the relationships that we have, whether it's our friends, our family, a partner. But we're talking about not being dependent to the degree that we rely on them to make us happy. And understanding that we are responsible for that because we are responsible for creating our own inner peace. I understand in the world we live in, connection is key. And I even will say to a degree, it's normal to seek some validation and acceptance from the people around you, but we do need to be aware of how we manage it. And we have to trust that we have what it takes to figure things out, to be successful. We have what it takes to be resilient. And, and so conversely, I just want to say that an inability to truly make ourselves happy is often linked to low self-confidence, low self-esteem, low self-worth. And that is often a topic that I help a lot of people work through in coaching. And for us to be able to get past that struggle and understand that we are really the architect of our own lives and that the first step in creating our own happiness is just being self-aware enough to recognize that maybe you're looking to someone else to fulfill something that you are the one who's truly capable of fulfilling without the help of anyone. So all of this is about awareness. And also, I just want to say, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh gosh, <laughs> Maybe Anna's really talking to me today. I think I have been a little too emotionally dependent on some of the relationships I have in my life, or I've been taking a back seat and waiting and hoping for something to happen. And in waiting for that, I expect that thing is going to make me happier or, you know, whatever this conversation might be bringing up for you. I just want to say, look, be gentle with yourself. And it's always about being kind to ourselves because Self-awareness can be painful once in a while. And so just be kind to yourself if you're realizing that this is an opportunity. And again, I will just say it's not uncommon to become emotionally dependent at times with some people in our lives because of the depth of the relationship. And we can sometimes get lost a little bit in that, in a whether it's a marriage, a long-term relationship, even a really close friendship. And so this might just be the wake up call for some of us to say, okay, I just have to tip the scales back a little bit. And my message to you comes with no judgment and it comes to you with a hug to say, don't do that to yourself either. Don't shame yourself or judge yourself if you realize that there's been a little dependency going on emotionally in your life. It's okay because now that we're having the conversation and you're aware of it, you get to figure it out and decide what you want to do. 
And I think that what I can share with you are a couple of ways that you can make some changes and you can take some action if you realize that you perhaps have given someone else the keys to your happiness. All you have to do is take the keys back. And the way that you can do that is starting now. It's already in progress because as you listen to this, you're already changing your focus. You're already developing awareness and you're paying more attention. So you've already started step one. So yay. I think another thing that you can do in terms of taking back some of this power and control is just dedicate a little more time to the things that you genuinely enjoy. What is it that makes you feel fulfilled? What is it that you really get excited about doing? It could be the simplest things. And sometimes I think that's even the best place to start because when you embrace something like some simplicity, I think that it becomes the first domino and, and things start falling into place. So just think about maybe start a list of, of five or 10 things that you would like to make some more time to do. It could be crafting, it could be hiking, it could be journaling, whatever hobby or fun activity that truly will bring you some joy, make a list and then can you put some time on your calendar for it? And if you want to do it with a friend, that's great. This is not about only doing things solo. It's just understanding that you are in the driver's seat. You're in control of making the list, creating the time, and being able to go out and enjoy yourself. Now, I will say this, though. It's okay to do it alone, too. I have always been very social, and I was the life of the party. At school, I always had a lot of friends. I wanted to do things. I wanted to go out. And in the last several years, I have really developed more of an appreciation for alone time. And I even used to say when I was younger, oh, I don't need alone time. Being with everyone is what charges my battery. And that's true. And I think a lot of you are, are like that too. Yet, I have come to really appreciate some alone time. And if you're really thinking about this conversation and, and discovering that maybe you rely a little bit too much on finding fun with a person or friends, if you're not someone who has spent a lot of time by yourself, this could be a great opportunity and a great challenge for you to practice being on your own in a way that feels good. And I have learned to appreciate having dinner by myself. I've learned to appreciate having a day to go shopping or even sightseeing or whatever it is. And yes, is it always more fun to share some things with other people? Of course. But I have found myself having a great time alone. And that could be another way that you start to shift the scales and take some of that power back. So give yourself permission to use some of your time alone, again, in a way that makes you feel good and explore how you can take advantage of some hobbies or interests or experiences all by yourself. Because when you do, you'll get to know yourself better. And that's, again, one of the core parts of self-mastery is understanding who you are understanding your strengths, understanding your weaknesses, parts of your character, parts of your value system. Of course, we have lots of assessments that I can recommend. And as a gift to you guys for listening to today's podcast, I'm going to put a link in to offer you a free assessment, actually two of them. I will offer you the ability to take the DISC assessment and the VIA Institute character strengths assessment. I've used that in lots of my courses and in my coaching and they're great assessments that will help you identify more about who you are, your strengths, your weaknesses and your values and all the things that really make you who you are. And that can bring out a lot in terms of just really knowing who you are and getting to know yourself again. So I will include that in the show notes for you as a special gift. And lastly, I mentioned a minute ago to write out a list of things that you enjoy doing. And that sounded like a lot of activities. I want to, and, and maybe make a second list, but I want to give you a little bit more clarity around this. 
maybe just start with a what makes me happy list. And that could be as simple as really strong cup of coffee. It could be the sun hitting you in the face in the morning. It could be reading a story with your child or grandchild. It could be that favorite candle that you love. Like little things, tiny moments of happiness. Because when you can start to list all that out and bring more of that into your world, those little tiny things start to multiply. And it creates a a reaction in your mind. It creates a response. And by connecting with those little things, by creating this list of little things that make you happy, it will expand your awareness and your gratitude for them. And it will give you the inspiration to call more things into your life. It just starts this wonderful momentum, this wonderful domino effect of wanting more positive, more happy things in your life. And I think that is another great way for you to start this journey. And as you take the keys to your unhappiness back and tip the scales so that you create more of the control here versus giving it power to someone else. So I think this was a great conversation. I love that it was inspired by my little box of cards that I pull out. I won't say daily. I I probably could, but I would say quite often this becomes like my thought of the week. So I hope this is your thought of the week and that you may even want to play this episode back again. And I think it's also a great episode to share with somebody, right? And for you to just share with anyone and everyone, because We all can use a little more happiness in our world and we can all use the reminder that it is up to us to not only define what makes us happy, but to create space and go after what makes us happy. So please share this episode with someone who would love to hear it. And I just want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for bringing me into your world today. And I don't think anything is ever a coincidence. So I trust you needed to hear this. And I am really excited because I'm going to do something right now for myself that will bring a smile to my face. And uh, I will see you next time on Monday Morning Mojo. Thanks for listening.